Hello everybody, I'm Nora Burrows and we are in the little sewing nook I was recently telling you about. And I was mentioning how I had made this cathedral window quilt to go into my window to use as a curtain. So that would go ahead and hang that up together because I finished it. I'm going to hang it up immediately before we talk about this because it's a little hazy even right now. It's not super bright, but I do feel a little squinty. So let's try out the curtain and see if it works. I'll also give you a little tour of my nook uh, after we hang the curtain, but let's see here. So I put these loops in to hang it from, and then let me show you what I used for hooks. I used these, I got these on Amazon, and they're those command strips. So you have the hook and then you put the little command strip on and stick it on. So this quilt is pretty heavy because it is a cathedral window quilt. Um, and so hopefully those command strips will be strong enough to, to hold this, but we'll find out. Look at how nicely that background cream color just kind of pops with the sunlight streaming through. It's really cool. Well, let me tell you what happened. I put these hooks up here on the wrong side because now my moths are upside down, which you would say, oh, well, you know, maybe they're just diving or something, but I really will not be able to handle the fact that they're upside down. Here's another one. So not today and not this week, but eventually I will take those loops off and put them on the other side. So let me give you a little tour of my nook. It's tiny. This is how big it is. I should measure it to give you an exact measurement, but this is the width, right? I have my sewing table right over here on a little desk. I have a little shelf to put some sewing supplies. I thought we'd go through those little bins and see what's in them. I have my computer down there. And then I have my sewing baskets. And that's it. This is it, the little nook. And then I do have on the wall behind me an ironing board that I can take down and set up. But what do you really need, right? And I think it's cute. So this is where I've been sewing lately, and I really love it. It's nice and cozy up here. And as I mentioned, these windows are so pretty, you know, that you don't wanna, you don't wanna block the architectural detail. But when it is bright, I can put my little shade up and then take it down when, I'm, when I don't need it. And now for my Zoom calls, I can have a nice little background because whenever I'm Zooming, which is not frequently, but I do like Zoom for my guild meetings and stuff like that. I always have like a really boring background and most people have like quilts in their background and now I have a pretty little quilt. So a couple people had asked about how to do the cathedral window and I used a YouTube video by Angela Walters. She has a pretty popular YouTube channel and her cathedral window was just a pillow. So I took what she told us to do for the pillow and I just made it bigger. So if you search on YouTube Angel Angela Walters cathedral window quilt, I'm sure it'll pop up. So you can take a look at that. And then I just added a couple borders just to make it a little bigger. What I'll say about the cathedral window quilts is that they are not difficult. They are incredibly easy. I can't tell you how easy. However, they are very time consuming. It takes a really long time, much longer than I had realized. I thought this was going to be a super quick project and it took me forever. The other thing is that for the pieces that go around the edge, kind of the trim, like right, right here, these pieces here, you need twice as much fabric as you think that you need. Um, and I think that that's why people tend to use the cream or white instead of a color because you can use muslin and it's a lot less expensive. The last thing I wanted to mention about this is that it really is done kind of in an heirloom uh, quilt way. Uh, I hand did a lot of it. You can machine do the entire piece. I didn't quilt it. This, I just put, you know, right sides together from the back and flipped it. But in terms of sewing the pieces together, you can machine do the whole thing and that's probably a lot faster. Part of why I think it took me a long time is because I was hand stitching. Let me show you the parts that I hand stitched. So the way this works is this is, these pieces are kind of a flap that's open and then you have to kind of 
push them down and sew along the edge. So you can machine sew very close to the edge, but I hand stitched kind of similar to a binding all of these pieces. So that took, that took a long time. And it is a bit silly that I spent so much time and hand pieced so much of this quilt because it's a curtain and what comes with windows and curtains, sunlight. And what is absolutely the worst for your quilts, sunlight. So this is gonna fade significantly. And I realized this as I was making it and part of me was like, why am I doing it this way? But I just internally felt like this is how I wanted to make it, even if it was gonna take a lot more time. That's just how I wanted it. It was gonna be in my bedroom. I was gonna see it all the time and I wanted to do it the way I wanted to do it, so I did. Let's take a little drawer tour. All right, let's see what's in this drawer here. I know what's in this drawer here, but let's take a look. Luckily, it's on a nice little tray. So that's easy, right? But these are all my hexagon pieces. And what I will say is I am completely over doing anything related to paper piecing hexagons. It was really fun for a long time, uh, but I'm just really over it now. And what I would like to do, which I think could be a fun video, is I have so many of these hexagons kind of in like different shapes and patterns, and some of these are really, really pretty fun, is try and put these all into the same quilt, which would be a challenge, uh, but I think it could be fun because, you know, these shapes don't really go together. So it would be probably a lot of, you know, appliqueing these onto blocks and then putting the blocks together. But I think it could look really cool. And then I have a bunch of just single ones that I could kind of maybe sprinkle all around or something. And then not all of the patterns really go nicely together, but I think I could, I think I could make it work. So I have all of these here. And even this one where you're missing one here, I think I would just leave it. It looks kind of like honeycomb-ish with the piece missing. It doesn't really bother me. Or I could do something like sew the piece kind of like out a little bit. Like that could look purposeful, right? And then I sewed a bunch of these onto backgrounds already. Um, so I've made a lot of progress on this. I just need to figure out how to bring all of these pieces together to make one quilt or two quilts. I think I might make two quilts and put kind of all of the ones that have more of a masculine feel together and all the ones that have more of a feminine feel together. Here's the last one. I think that one's really cool. I love that. So that's this. And then I can just put that right back into the drawer. Let's see, what is in this here. Oh, so I did not remember I had these. This is from the cathedral window quilt. This is here. Let's shift so you can see. So these pieces here along the edge, it's this. So I have all of these leftover ones. Basically you sew these together to make a diamond. Now you're not even going to need to go and watch Angela Walters. You'll just know how to do it. You sew them to make a diamond. You put a square of like your main fabric like this right in the middle and then you curve it down and sew it down. So your main square in the middle is hiding your seams and then you, you do that. That probably didn't make any sense, but you can see how this is a square and then you fold it in half. So it's, it's not a raw edge here and then you flip it over. Um, but I made so many of these. Look at this. So I have a whole bunch left over if I want to do another quilt for another window, which is why I cut so many out. And then again, I cut out some background pieces also for more cathedral window quilts. I have a little notebook in here. What else? And I have a t-shirt. Why is a t-shirt in here? Well, because I thought it might make a good t-shirt quilt. Right? It's a Beatles. I don't know. That's kind of, that's it for that drawer. Let's see, what's in the one down here? Um, I have some tech gadgety things. And then what's in this bag? Oh, I was going to show how to make pockets, how to put pockets into skirts or shirts. So I borrowed these skirts and shirts from my friend. 
so that I could put pockets in them, but that's never gonna happen, so I need to give that back to her. And then this is an old apron that I thought I would cut up and make it into a baby quilt. And the last drawer has absolutely nothing in it. It's completely empty. Well, that's good to know because I have a lot of projects I could put in here. I'm sitting on the ground. Let's take a look and see what's in these bins on my shelf. I think I know what's in most of these, but this one is the project I showed you before, which is the ABC quilt. I showed it to you in the last video. Um, with, I'm not gonna show you all these things, but with the heart. Uh, so these are all little scrap bits to go into that quilt, this whole bag right here. Isn't this a fantastic bag? My friend gave me that bag. I also know what is in here a bunch of Tula Pink fabric because I'm gonna make a Tula Pink quilt. I'll probably be making this over the summer, so follow along. Tula Pink can sometimes be difficult to use. It's difficult to figure out how to use some of her, her fabric. I love her fabric so much, um, but it is kind of challenging and cutting it into always feels very stressful because it's so beautiful. But I got all of this Tula Pink fabric. I'm not gonna show it all to you. Um, because you'll see it when I make this quilt. But it's this line of hers that recently came out that's like this tropical, tropical line. Um, and so I have just, you know, a bunch, a bunch of these in this box here. What next? I have my computer here, and then next to it I have another bin. And then after this bin, I have a bunch of space. So I can put a whole another bin down there. I have a lot, oh, this is some of my, fidget pieces that I've made. Um, I recently did, I actually forgot that these were in here, but I recently did a fidget quilt video. It's like the most recent video I posted. It didn't come out great, but you can take a look. These are from earlier fidget videos that I did. Just like these random pieces. So I need to figure out what to do with these. But that, these are in the bin here. What else? A bin down here in the bottom. Oh, okay. Uh, these are scrap bits I'm putting together for the quilt that I'm working on now. And I'm gonna show you, let me show you now. Let's just do it. In a recent video, I showed you this blue fabric that I needed more of that I got. And I'm gonna show you the quilt that I'm working on for that, which is what this bin is. This is my leftover bits from that quilt that I'm putting, that I'm sewing together to make into kind of a scrappy quilt. So I'll show you that. These are the quilt blocks. I'm not gonna show you all of them because there's 25, but they're all of these trees and each tree, they're just wonky trees. So each tree is a little bit different. You'll recognize that black and gray print with a little bit of yellow. I showed that last time too. Um, but each of these trees are a different shape and they're done with really geometric prints, uh, which I think is really cool because you take kind of the tree aspect of nature and then you put it with these, you know, straight lines and modern fabrics. And I think they look really cool. So I'll show you two more. Here's one and here's another. And let me show you the background that these are gonna go on It'd be helpful if I had a design wall so I wouldn't have to just hold this up against my body, but here, I'll show this to you up close and then I'll show it to you, see if I can lean up some of these blocks against it. So that will be, this will be, sa this will be sashing. So it will be kind of like next to each other that. So that's the idea. And let me show you the scrap bits I'm sewing together. I think they're super awesome. I'm really excited. Almost more about this <clears throat> leftover scrap bits than I am about the actual tree quilt itself, though I do love this tree quilt. I think it's going to be really cool. So here's one block that's been squared off. I had so many triangles left over from this project because of the nature of the trees and the trees being a triangle. I, I just had a lot of triangles left over. So I was able to kind of put these triangles together to make these scrap blocks. 
here's another one that's squared off. This is all yellow, gray, black. This one is not squared off. But aren't these neat? How these come together? I really love them. I can't wait to see this quilt when it's done. I have a lot of these pieces. I'll show you just one more. Here's the last one. And then I'll continue to show my progress on both the tree quilt and the scrappy quilt as we go on. Um, let's see if there's any more bins. Did we go through all the bins? So this bin was the bin that had the scrap pieces that I'm working from for that, that tree quilt. There is, there's one more bin, let's see. It's this one over here. I know what this is, this is my Christmas fabric. This is not all of my Christmas fabric. I have a big Tupperware bin up in my attic of Christmas fabric, but that is box store fabric, which typically isn't as good quality. It's great, it's fine. I use it on a ton of projects, but I like to keep my really good quality quilting cotton separate. And so this is my little bin, and you probably remember it. I showed these cute little blocks that I made a while ago. And then did I show you the wreath that I made when I made those little ones? I can't remember, I'll show you again because that's in here. Here's the wreath. I did show you this wreath. Yeah, there's the wreath. Uh, and then I have some layer cakes that I bought. I don't know why I bought those layer cakes. I never like to buy pre-cuts, never, ever. And I bought these pre-cuts, which seems crazy. Um, so I have these pre-cut pieces. There's a lot of them. I went through these in like a fabric haul video. I think it was the video that was called, um, I hate online fabric shopping. So I bought more online fabric or something like that. Uh, so if you want to see what's in, in these, you can check that out. And then just, I have two other fabrics here for Christmas, which are pretty, pretty cute. I have this one here, these little like gnomes and presents and Christmas trees and such. And then I have this one here which is always, which is also really cute. With the Christmas tree, Santa, there's like reindeer in the house down here. So, let's see what's on the back. Is it the same thing? Oh, there's some elves in the workshop. So that's cute. That's it. That's my desk drawers, my nook, my shelves. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.